For those that follow British politics, you saw this coming. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson resigns as Conservative Party leader. I am no expert on the politics of the UK, but I have seen things from afar, and I'm not surprised this is happening. In 2019, there was this major breaking story. The Conservatives won a massive victory in the UK, and for a lot of us, we were, we were thinking this could be indicative of something coming in 2020, and kind of, kind of. People were fed up with left politics and these liberal politics, party scandals. So in the UK, at the very least, it seemed to us in the United States, there was a reckoning coming in, in, in Western nations where people were saying enough. We've seen the rise of nationalist populism. We've seen people say no to this internationalist elite climate change, all of that stuff. Whether you agree with it or not is not the point. Regular people were saying no. But what did Boris Johnson, the prime minister in the UK, do? Everything that the left in the United States basically was doing, he was enforcing lockdowns and then partying. That was one of the biggest scandals. Now, I'll come out and say it right away. I, I don't follow British politics all that much, but this is still a major story. And there's going to be some interesting overlap between our culture and what's happening in the UK. So I'm wondering what comes next. Now, the bigger story here is that the, how do you say it? Something strange is happening. I'll put it that way. You may have seen the Dutch farmer protests. And I'll just come out and say this. Dutch farmers are protesting because their government is enforcing some kind of emission control, nitrogen control, hindering the farmer's ability to grow food at a time when we're told a global famine is underway because of the war between Russia and Ukraine. Something is happening. Something is happening. We'll start with this and talk about, here's kind of the idea. It is, look, again, I'm going to stress this point. You, you, you're better off going to the Lotus Eaters podcast with Carl Benjamin to get a breakdown on the UK stuff with, with what's happening with Boris Johnson. But what I'm seeing here is, even if the Republicans win in the midterms, even if we get another major victory from the Republican Party, there's no guarantee it would be any different. That being said, Donald Trump probably is different. Axios reports Boris Johnson on Thursday announced his resignation as head of the UK Conservative Party, but promised to stay on as prime minister until a new party leader is chosen. A historic number of government resignations triggered by a series of scandals has made Johnson's position untenable. It's a stunning fall for a prime minister who in 2019 won a historic 80 seat majority on the back of his pledge to take the UK out of the EU. This is what's important. And this is what I can comment on. I remember that. It was massive. There were areas of the UK that hadn't voted conservative in like 100 years who voted conservative. And then what happened? Nothing got done. This is the fear we have in the United States, that the Republicans will probably win some massive majority come November, and then nothing will get done. I think Donald Trump would do something. I think Donald Trump was not like Boris Johnson. Some people thought he might be there. Look at him. They both got weird hair and all that stuff. And uh, Boris Johnson very much was establishment shill. They say, quote, it is clearly now the will of the parliamentary conservative party that there should be a new leader and therefore a new prime minister, Johnson said, outside 10 Downing Street. It's painful not to be able to see through so many project uh, through so many project and ideas myself. The herd instinct is powerful. When the herd moves, it moves. Johnson said he expected a timetable for his departure to be, de to be determined as early as Monday by cons uh, senior conservative party lawmakers. Last month, Johnson faced a no confidence vote sparked by members of, a conserv of his conservative party after he was found to have broken the law by attending several social gatherings during the country's strict COVID-19 lockdown. He survived the vote, but the party gate scandal over the events at number 10 Downing Street severely damaged his popularity. It's funny, right? Boris Johnson was supposed to be this big conservative leader, but he went full lockdown, full COVID-19, all of that stuff. It seemed to, at least me here in the U.S., there was very little difference between him and, say, Joe Biden, save Boris Johnson at least has the ability to speak. By Wednesday evening, so many ministers had resigned that it was clear Johnson lacked the requisite number of loyal members of parliament to fully staff his government. Adding to the drama, the resignations continue to stack up as Johnson publicly testified before a committee of hostile senior MPs during a once a year oversight hearing. So there you go. I mean, look, I'll, I'll leave it there. 
Boris Johnson barely on as as prime minister. Check out Carl Benjamin, Lotus Eaters, for a better breakdown of what's going on in the UK. I think I'll, I'll put it this way. Why we lead with this story? I mean, this is huge. Boris Johnson's resignation is the big story. Everyone's talking about it. But it's UK conservative politics, so it's like American Democrat. Does it really matter all that much to us? I can say this. Don't put all of your hopes in one basket. When the conservatives won in 2019, so many people were just, I mean, I was saying it. People in the UK were laughing, saying, this is crazy. How could they have won so outrageously? And this is what you get. When Brexit happened, many people said that uh, Brexit and Trump's victory were, were similar, in a similar vein. Had a lot to do with the internet and populism. And then uh, Brexit took years to, to actually happen. It was 2016. Uh, people were celebrating that Boris Johnson getting elected was a reaffirmation of the demand for Brexit. And Brexit got done to a certain degree. This is the UK leaving the European Union. And now it's disgrace. And I feel the same thing is, is headed our way in the United States. Just a little bit late. The Republicans will likely win in November. The Republicans will likely do nothing. And that's where we're heading. But there's a bigger, there's, there's a bigger narrative here as to why I wanted to leave with this story. And it has a lot to do with the Georgia Guidestones being decimated. Well, probably, not, probably a better word is obliterated. You may have seen the story the other day. Georgia Guidestones mysteriously bombed. Now, we, talk about, we talked about it on TimCast IRL. After the bombing, the county came in and demolished the Guidestones, known as a monument to globalism. I think it's interesting to see the destruction of this monument, as well as the resignation of Boris Johnson and what's happening with the farmers protesting. It all does come together. It seems like the, well, what's the internationalist climate change agenda is faltering, that the people are continuing to win. The populist movement is working. And Boris Johnson does not represent that. Now, I will also shout out TimCast.com. Head over to TimCast.com and become a member to directly support our work. We've got a bunch of shows that we're going to be launching exclusively at TimCast.com as a streaming video on demand service. So you saw the story about the Georgia Guidestones. Someone bombed them. We have some, we're we're investigating here at TimCast.com. Some preliminary information It seems to have been an attack uh, politically motivated, and that seems rather obvious. I don't want to rehash this story. I want to talk about the fault lines, the failure of this global agenda, powerful elites who want to enact climate emission restrictions and and things like that. This is where things are, are, are getting interesting. The Georgia Guidestones blowing up, Boris Johnson resigning. We have this story from Politico Europe. Police fire on Dutch farmers protesting environmental rules. Farmers have blocked supermarkets, distribution centers, and roads in response to government plans to cut nitrogen emissions. Here's where it all comes together, because on the surface, they all seem rather different in terms of their stories. I'll say outright, obviously, Boris Johnson's resignation is just big breaking news, but it does all come together. The agenda is collapsing. The narrative is broken. Channels like uh, TimCast, my videos, TimCast IRL, are growing. The Daily Wire is taking over, and all of us obviously oppose this strange corporatist global agenda. Dutch farmers are protesting. I'm not saying they're going to win. It looks like their resistance is at least having some impact. But the narrative, the most important thing, the control mechanism, is completely broken. I'll explain why. Environmental rules... Why is the Dutch government enforcing environmental rules at a time when we are facing a food crisis and famine? It doesn't make sense. CNBC says the world will face a severe food crisis and famine, Zelensky says. Volodymyr Zelensky warned that the world will face the food crisis. Okay, we get it. Zelensky told delegates that his country was unable to export enough food because of Russia's blockade at Black Sea ports which was preventing exports from being shipped to other countries. He said that Russia's war on Ukraine is a threat to the system of international law beyond the impact of his country. I find this fascinating. At a time when we know that we're about to starve, Dutch farmers are told they have to curtail their efforts. Why? Climate change. It makes you wonder about what's really causing the food crisis. Why would 
why would these countries enact these policies? Political reports. Dutch police fired shots at tractor riding farmers who were protesting against plans to cut nitrogen emissions on Tuesday evening in northern Netherlands. Police said they were responding to a threatening situation when the farmers who were attempting to push push past a blockade to get onto a highway in the province of Friesland started to drive their tractors into officers and their vehicles. According to the Friesland police, their shots at a tractor, but no one was injured. Three suspects were arrested. I can't pronounce this word, but the Rich Kri- <laughs> Wow. Um, Rich Kreischerchercher. The Dutch, I, I'm sorry if you're Dutch, I can't pronounce that word. The Dutch's government internal investigator said that it would look into the events given police had discharged their weapons. Let me stress this again. Police fire on Dutch farmers. These are bullets. Spokesman for the Friesland police did not respond to inquiries, but said a statement would be released later Wednesday. Dutch farmers have this week be, been protesting government plans to, that, that could require farmers to use less fertilizer and reduce their livestock numbers, which could force some farms to shut. The Dutch government wants to reduce emissions of nitrogen oxide and ammonia, which are produced by livestock, by 2030. Cuts could reach 70% in some areas under the plans. In response, Dutch farmers have blocked supermarkets, distribution centers, and roads in protest this week. Wednesday morning, they are expected to demonstrate at the Groningen Airport Eldi, according to Dutch media. MP Carolyn van der Plaas called for an emergency debate with Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte and the Minister of Justice and Security, Dylan Yeselgoes Zegirius, about the escalating protests. It's crazy times, huh? Police fire on Dutch farmers protesting environmental rules. Why have environmental rules shuttering farms at a time when we are going to experience a global famine? It doesn't make sense. Here's what I can say. It seems like something else is happening. I, I, obviously, right? Something else is going on and the system is collapsing. I'm not entirely sure that Boris Johnson's resignation And Dutch police shooting at farmers have a direct correlation. I I think not, actually. But it says to me that the global system, as we've uh, known it, as some people refer to it, it's collapsing. The Georgia Guidestones, the monument to globalism being blown up and destroyed. Donald Trump's victory. Brexit. Now Boris Johnson's resignation. Police shooting at farmers. And get this. We have a tweet from Kian Bexty. It's happening. Italian farmers are rising up in protest, threatening to take their tractors to Rome. Quote, we are not slaves. We are farmers. We cannot make ends meet. I've not seen any corroborating uh, news stories on what's happening in Italy. But all this stuff, I don't know, man. It seems to be escalating. The breakdown. Maybe it was COVID. Maybe COVID was part of it. I don't know. Now, I don't think that there's some people believe there's a grand global cabal. And I suppose your view on this, it really isn't so much about whether there is a global cabal as opposed to the the, the extent to which you think they're organizing the power they hold. Because I don't believe in these grand conspiracy theories about like an Illuminati meeting behind closed doors or underground bunkers in robes, twirling their mustaches, being like, we must destroy the world. What I do think is... um, There's not a conspiracy theory that global interests routinely meet and make plans. I mean, that's that's a fact. The G20, the G7, Bilderberg, global elites publicly meet all the time. The Davos group. And they probably have some kind of plan. That is not to say that there's like a hierarchy of um, authority, like Klaus Schwab is the leader or anything like that. He's certainly a leader at Davos. So there are some people who believe that there is a secret cabal of families that have been ruling the world for a long time. Yeah, I don't know about all that. But um, powerful uh, interests, politicians and corporate leaders from various countries meeting together. Yeah, it's called the um, World Economic Forum. Yeah, it's called the G7. Yeah, it's called the G20. Yeah, it's called Bilderberg. These aren't conspiracies. These things happen. And then you have Epstein. I wonder what he was doing. But let me put it this way. When the narrative about a global cabal world leaders meeting is publicly known, publicly stated, and the media still desperately tries to call it a conspiracy, 
It's just like, dude, shut up. You've lost. The, it's, the cracks in the facade are so thick, we can see the blinding lights emerging from the other side. There is an effort among global elites to meet together. There is a liberal economic order, a liberal world order. Biden's administration flat out talked about it on TV. They're not hiding anything anymore, but they're losing. They're losing everything. It's kind of crazy to watch. The Georgia Guidestones being blown up. Some people have said, like, why do I care about this stupid rock? Some have said it wasn't made by globalists. It was made by a Christian in the 1980, in 1980. I don't know. The idea is not about, it, the issue is not who made the Guidestones. The issue is that they exist and that there are people who view it as a monument to the new world order or to globalism. So someone went and bombed it. Timcast.com is currently investigating. We had a reporter down on, uh, at the Guidestones only in the past, I think, couple months. And preliminary information coming out. I want to say it's very preliminary. Scuttlebutt from internal sources is that it was a politically motivated attack. So let's break this down. Boris Johnson's out. The UK government is in crisis. We'll see how they, how they muster and they manage. There's a food shortage coming. They're telling us to our faces and Dutch, pro- Dutch farmers are protesting to the point where police fired on them. It's breaking down, my friends. The collapse is upon us. And maybe the collapse is the intent. Maybe this is everything that the global interests wanted. What happens if there's no food? It's not going to be the United States that starves. Europe will certainly, but it's the weak that won't make it. It's almost like the people who talk about depopulation and global leaders are somehow involved in this crisis. And that's, that's really all I can really say. Now, I, I suppose the question is, is it a conspiracy in that the global world leaders are manufacturing a crisis that will kill people? Or is it that they've lost control? They can't control people. And thus, we're going to see serious loss of life. Don't know. Not a psychic. I don't think that uh, Bill Gates, for instance, is coming out and being like, mm, we need to kill more people. I think Bill Gates wears his ideas on his sleeves. He comes out and says, we need population reduction. So maybe there's a Bill Gates going behind the scenes and he's saying things like, let's call people, perhaps. But I think it's usually just more overt than that. The dude comes out and says, less people, please. <clears throat> so I don't think these world leaders are orchestrating like the mass execution of people. There's some people who believe all that stuff. It's, it's possible. And what I mean is it's physically possible. It's in the realm of it, it, it could exist. But I don't know. I think there are easy ways, easier ways to go about reducing world population. And these people have advocated for population reduction. The Georgia Guidestones advocate for population reduction and eugenics. These world leaders have called for population control. But does that mean that they would uh, advocate for or enact policies to literally kill people? I don't know. That that's that's it's a coin toss. I'll put it this way. I think it is entirely within the realm of possibility that world leaders and corporate interests would try to kill lots of people. Why? Because murderers exist, because serial killers exist. And imagine if a serial killer got the reins of government. Wars exist. These things exist. I think it's absolutely possible. I really do. I don't think there's any evidence to suggest right now that's the case. I think the stronger uh, outcome, the the, the, the bigger likelihood, is that many of these world leaders are just bumbling idiots, struggling to maintain control of what's happening in the world, and... The result is this. If these people really did have control, we would see something. We would see more people die, but we wouldn't see bombings. We wouldn't see farmers getting shot at. You would see control. So maybe the policies they're enacting are an attempt to reduce carbon emissions and control population, and they suck at it, and it results in chaos and collapse. And that's about it. I don't think that Bill Gates is going behind the scenes and acting like that dude from Kingsman where he's like, we got to kill a bunch of people. I think he's like, we need to reduce population and do it fast. How can we convince people not to have kids? I think that's what you're seeing. Other than that, 
it's possible that they do. I'll, I'll put it this way. The media would tell you there's no grand conspiracy. And to be fair, there's no real evidence that the world leaders are advocating for and trying to kill people. But it is possible. And possible doesn't mean much to me. Show me evidence and I'll entertain it. For the time being, all that really matters is crime is skyrocketing. Monuments are being blown up. Statues are being torn down. This country, the United States is being ripped apart. World leaders are resigning. Joe Biden's in, in shambles. I think the corporatist global elite are struggling. They're falling apart. Hunter Biden on camera doing crack. I think the reality is the global elites have just lost control of everything. And the result is this. The result is resistance. And the result is partially a bit of chaos. I'll wrap it up by saying one thing, Re reiterating this point. If there is a global famine coming, why would they try to stop farmers from farming? Makes you wonder. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.